Anyone living in an apartment? This guy. All right, and you have to pay a monthly rent. It's called a lease. And the lease typically is for a year, and then you renew the lease each year. All right. Or they kick you out. Or they kick you out, or you decide to go somewhere else. Okay? So you typically have to pay for a security deposit. So let's say you leave and you do damage to the apartment, they take that security deposit and use it to fix the apartment, and then whatever is left over, they give back to you. That's kind of how it works in the real world. So um, if no repairs are needed, then you get your entire deposit back. One apartment building has apartments that rent for $500 a month and a security deposit of $700. So eventually, I won't give you the equation. You should come up with an equation. But for right now, if there's a security deposit of $700 and it's a $500 a month rent, you have to pay $700 even before the first day. So already, you're paying $700. Then every month thereafter, it's an additional $500 and an additional $500. And that's actually represented by this function. The cost equals $500 per month plus the initial $700 investment. Does the equation make sense? Yep. Okay, and it is in function form because it pops out what the cost is depending on how many months you put into it. Make sense? All right, so it says graph the function. So based on this equation, um, I can start plotting some points, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of points should I plug in and what kind of value will I get out? Well, use the body. Body. You could, couldn't you? Yeah. All right, so let's start with the first one. What's the first bottom number? Zero. Two. Zero. All right, if I put in zero months, how much did I have to pay? Seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars. If you put zero in here, that's zero plus seven hundred. So right now, I already have an ordered pair that's 0, 0,700. Where does that go on my graph? 0 and up in between 1,000 and 0. You bet. Now, this is where the real life kind of graph is hard. You've got to estimate about where 700 is. Where would you guys about put it? A little bit above half. A little bit above half. It's good, good enough. So this would be about half and a little bit above it. You're sitting right there. Close enough to being 700. Is it? Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Now the next one, no, is absolutely right. He's like, hey, you can use these bottom numbers because all these bottom numbers are our inputs. So I can put in a two next, right? So if I put in a two, it's 500 times two plus 700. And what do you get? 1,700. 1,700. So at two, I'm at 1,700. You plot 1,700 and two. Two and 1,700 is a little below 2,000. I put a dot there. And you keep going. Put in four. Put in six. Put in eight. Put in ten. Put in twelve. Grab the function. Give that a shot. All right. So what we get when we put in a four? What do you guys get? Three thousand two hundred. Three thousand two hundred. Three thousand. Wait, wait, are we good with the 4 and 3200? Yeah. No? Oh. no? Yes. Yes? Wait, you add a grand each time yeah. off of the first one. It's 2,700. 4 is 2,200. I like them 100 grand chocolate bars, they're good. Alright, since we have some debate here, let's actually put it in. It's 2,200. What's four times 500? Why are you adding 700? Why are you adding 2,000? Why you pay that once? Two, oh, I was adding 200. 2,000. Uh, I looked at that. Told you guys that I was right. All right. Yes, and Tristan's bring up a good point. He's like, why don't we, we only paid that once, right? But this is the question. It says, what do you pay if you there were there for four months? You pay the 700 and four months worth of living there. That's really what it's a yeah. a case by case basis. What, how much would you pay in four months? What would you pay in six months? That I kind looked of. at that and it looks like a two. I got you. I'm confused. I got it right. So what's it supposed to be? What now? Twenty seven hundred. Yes. Yep. And then you add seventeen hundred under that. How is it? You add one thousand under that. How is it? You just add one. Does that have a question? Three thousand something. Well, well, right. How are you getting like two hundred? Huh? Okay. okay. So questions, questions, guys. Here we come. Let's look. Let's talk about this again. If I didn't stay in the apartment at all, I have to pay $700 for the security deposit. 
If I stay there two months, I have two months worth of $500 payments plus the $700 security deposit. This is a case by case basis if you're there for two months, if you're there for four months, if you're there for six months. That's what this is. Okay? Obviously, if you say, if you're going to start here, you're like, I pay $700 and every, every month I pay $500 more, $500 more, $500 more. That would be seeing the pattern. You know what I'm getting at? You start at $700 and then two months later, you a thousand more than that. Two months later, a thousand more. Two months later, a thousand more. See what I'm getting at? So, in, if you were there for four months, you'd have to pay twenty-seven hundred. If you were there for six months, you'd have to pay thirty-seven hundred. Because Tristan's right, two months worth of payment is a thousand dollars. So every two months you're jumping, you're going up a thousand dollars every two months. Yes. Make sense? Okay. So then we're at a little below this one. A little below this one, a little below this one, a little below this one. So this is what the graph is going to look like. Woo. Now, are you just going to stay there for 12 months and that's it? Or could you go there longer? Longer. Could you just stay there forever? Yeah. Yeah. Until the light goes Until, you know what I mean. But if it keeps going, don't we put like an arrow there realistically? Mm -hmm. That's really what the graph would look like. It is a ray. Because there's no way we can go back in time. You're not going to pay, they're not, the, the manager of the apartment is going to say, hey, I, would, I wasn't going to stay there for four months. So he pays you $2,000. That, that doesn't make sense. Okay? So, somebody said they knew what the domain was. What that is that? the domain? Yeah, coach. What is the domain? I'll just write it as D. Zero, two, four, six, eight. There's a random one thrown in there. <laughs> is that realistically true? You're either going to stay there no months, or two months, or four months, or six months, and nothing in between. Is that actually true? No. You can, no. You Could stay. you stay there one month? Yep. Yes. So do you actually need the one realistically? Wow. Yes. yes. Yeah. Could you stay there a month and three days? Oh, yeah. And would they prorate that? No. Nah. You no. don't think they would charge you the extra three days past the month? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm saying they just charge you a whole other month. Most likely. They they might do that. I don't think so. I think that would be against the law. Nah. No. That's what happens when you go camping. You gotta pay the whole month if you stay another three days. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. What campsite is that? I'm not going there. It's well, you said camping, go, right? You can go weekly or like seasonal. Okay, I go. I got you. I got you. All right. So the domain isn't really. There's some numbers in between here, right? Yeah. So we really wouldn't use just these. We'd actually maybe do something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One through twelve. No, you can't do that because then you're adding all the numbers in between. We know the numbers in between. So is there a better way of trying to figure this out? We can use numbers in between. We don't want to list them all. There's got to be a better way. Good catch though, as I started to write it down. Oh, we can do the numbers in between. Lovely. Is there a better way of writing this so we don't have to use all those stinking numbers? Yes. Anyone figure it out? 12 by 12. It involves an inequality. Do you guys know what an inequality is? Nah. Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So well, I know. Zero, and then you put the 12, and then you put a little thing. Kind of like that, yeah. So what we're going to say is the domain is actually. The number of months is going to be greater than or equal to zero. That encompasses everything. It says In, Z O. Yes. It's not a Z, it's greater than or equal to. <laughs> it says more than Nice two. try though. Alright. Looks like a two. It kinda of looks like a two, but it's alright. Greater than or equal to. Yeah. No, how come you didn't write that down? You're gonna to have to do it. Yeah, I, I did that graphing. Okay. Yeah, write this stuff down too. Because if you look at that last page of the worksheet, there's like four of these kinds of problems. And I'm going to ask you the same kinds of questions. Okay. I'm going to ask you to graph it and identify the demand and the range. Wow. All right. Now, Speaking of range, what would be the range? 2,700. All right. Now, you're saying it's got to be, can't, you mean you're not going to pay in between? No. Yes, you are. Yes. We just talked about you would be, if you're staying 
two months and a half, you might only be charged the two months so and a half. So you've got numbers in between again. So deposit greater than All right, yeah. So uh, we could call it C because we've got C, the cost, is going to be greater than or equal to what? The amount of time you spend there. 700. Why is it 700? Because you have to pay that. You have to start paying 700. Okay. What if you burn the place down? Uh, then my just All right. Pay. If you don't stay there one day, you still have to pay the seven hundred dollars security deposit. So you start at seven hundred, and then it goes up. Do they refund it? They can. Interesting, you say that. Number eight. Identify the demand and range. If the renter leases the apartment for one year, then moves out and doesn't get the security deposit back. Well, he loses seven hundred bucks. He loses seven hundred for sure. So we know he, the domain, the range, for sure starts at 700, but he's only there for a year. So, then you do so how that? much does it cost him to stay there for the year? 6,700? Is that what month 12 is? No, it would be like, no, it would be 6,000. If you're there for 12 months, how much is it going to cost? 7,000. $6,900. All right, $6,000 for being there for 12 months so and the $700, right? If you're there for 12 months, don't you pay $6,000 of rent and a $700 security deposit? Yes, sir. So it wasn't done right initially. Yes. $6,700. He said $6,400. Four? He said 67 <laughs> All right, introducing more... Symbolism. So this is less than or equal to signs. Really what this is meaning to you guys is the cost is going to be greater than or equal to 700 but less than or equal to 6700. It's actually an interval of the cost. Everything in between could be possible. Mostly. I don't think they're going to go by seconds and stuff like that. But you get I would. All right, well, remind me I have to rent an apartment from you. <laughs> you know, like timing me, me as I roll out my last luggage. There you go. All right, I need to give me the bill. All right. Um, what's the domain in this situation? He's there for a year. The, the 12 months, the little doodad. Less than or equal to thing. <laughs> Alright, the little doodad, less than or equal to. I thought M was three months. It is. So then why is the 12, because he's there for 12 months? Okay, he's there for 12 months, but what about other months that he's been there? Was he there for zero months? Yeah. Was he there for one month? Yeah. Yeah, he passed it, didn't he? Was he there for two? Yeah. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Four and a half. Yes. Six and a half. Yes. Seven and three quarters. Yes. So how do we write all those numbers so we don't have to write them all out? Yes. It looks just like the one above it. What's the lowest what's the lowest amount of months to be there? Zero. That's what I'm trying to get you guys used to. Instead of writing out all those possibilities, who in the right mind wants to do that, we write this little interval thing. And it's uh, and then use less than or equal to less than or equal to signs. Yes, sir. All right. So here's the idea of this these kinds of questions. It's always going to say graph the function and identify the domain and the range. In this case here, we're not going to go past zero. So when we choose a domain, it's usually from zero and on. Sometimes it stops. Sometimes it keeps going on forever. Uh, hardly ever in the real world do we go into the negatives. Sometimes we do. When we look at problems like this, if I asked you for the domain and range, we'd use negatives here because here are all the negative values are back here. So if we're just looking at a straightforward graphing problem, the domain would include negatives because you're using negatives and positive numbers. With me so far? Yep. But in the real world, we don't often, oops, In the real world, we don't often go in back in time. OK? 
Okay, so typically in the real world, we start at zero and then move forward from that. All right, take a look at your worksheet, those uh, problems in the back. All right, initially I'm giving you the equation every time. Later on, I'm just going to give you the story problem and you come up with the equation. All right, it says graph the function, identify the domain and range. Well, here's the function, and here's the situation. You're in a batting cage. Okay, what's the domain, what's the range? And then here's specific questions depending on that. Either you can use algebra to figure these out, or you can look at your graph and figure them out. That's kind of what this is. The next question has uh, your um, filling pots. Oh, it's points. That looks like points, doesn't it? It says points. It's filling, it's pots. It says points. Yeah, where's my, where's my mint for that? Soil. I caught my own mistake. Dude, I said it says pots. All right, a nursery is filling pots with no. soil. Every it's pot needs 27 cubic pots. inches of soil. So then they say, what's the function? So now, here, I'm kind of saying, can you give me the function now? Guys, I'm giving you guys ideas on how to do these problems. Mm -hmm. I gave you the function here. I'm asking for the function here. See if you can come up with it. Once you got the function, go ahead and graph it. Last problem. You are 40, 420 miles from home and you're driving toward home at an average of 60. So what's going to happen to that distance from home? It's going to get smaller. It's going to get smaller. So that's the idea here, right? And then here, write the function that shows the distance away. You know it's going to keep getting smaller, so you're going to have to keep subtracting something. And then here's the domain range here. So this is where Normal, just straightforward graphing problems become a little bit more complicated. These are the harder type problems. That's like okay. mental math.